If you work on a software testing team, you probably wrangled with poor customer requirements, inability to reuse test cases from release to release, and you've probably lost track of key defects that needed to get resolved in a specific release. If you have, we can help. With QA Complete, you can organize requirements into releases or agile sprints so that you can know what's shipping in a specific release. You can also track any enhancement requests as product backlog, allowing you to prioritize this for upcoming releases. You can also tie test cases back to the requirements to get great traceability. At any time, you can see how many test cases you've written for each requirement, as well as the number of defects that have been discovered. In this example, we have an Add New Order screen. We found five defects, and all of those are still open, and we've created 19 test cases. If we drill into the test cases, we can see what releases those test cases have been run and the current status of those. Reusing test cases from release to release is a breeze. Notice that you can create a test library and divide your tests into reusable functional areas, allowing you to reuse these test cases from release to release. When it gets time for testing, simply drag and drop items from the library into these test run folders to allow you to track which ones have passed and which ones have failed. Notice that any test case that fails turns red, any one that has passed turns green. You can also create defects from a failed test case very simply by going into the defect and marking it as failed. As soon as you do that, you can go to the bottom of the page and automatically choose to generate a defect upon the failed test case. Once you press that, you can then drill right into the defect and assign it to somebody to get resolved in an upcoming release. The developer that gets will get an email letting them know that this item is now in their queue to be fixed. Your team will appreciate the ability to see your test runs graphically. If you are using automation, you can also track any automated runs that you've done using uh, some of the major automated tools like Test Complete and HP's Quick Test Pro. By managing the runs of both your manual and your automated effort, you can see that effort side by side. Your development team will also be able to track all defects that have been discovered, and you can analyze the resolution rates day by day. You can come and query your list of defects by the status as well as by the person that they're assigned to. From the dashboard, you can see that trend out day by day, easily seeing how many defects you have that are open and how many are that have been resolved. You can also look at your defects by severity to see how problematic they are. Finally, you can look at them by priority, allowing you to make sure that you have the most high priority ones uh, signed up first so that you can get the critical ones done in your development lifecycle. QA Complete comes shipped with a number of different reports that allow you to keep everybody in the loop. Here are a list of defect reports, requirement reports, and test case reports. Let's imagine that we wanted to see a test case report that shows all of our test runs over a specific time period. We can do that by clicking the test case run history by project. This report provides full traceability. It shows you each of your requirements and each of the test cases have been run that have been run for it. And for each test case that's been run, it also shows you that run history, who ran it, and the date and the time that they ran it. Now that you've seen a tour of QA Complete, let's step through creating a set of requirements and creating test cases from those requirements. The first place we'll start is we'll go to our product backlog and determine if there's any items that we would like to address in this specific release. As you'll notice, we're going to start planning out our sprint 2 of release 1, and there's no requirements in that sprint at this point. So I'm going to go to the product backlog, and I'm going to identify the two high priority items, and I'm going to change those to an approved state, and we're going to move them into sprint 2. We can very easily do that by simply pressing Fast Edit and then choosing Update Multiple Items. I'm going to select these two high priority items, and I'm going to move the status to be approved. Once that's done, I'll also move it at this very same time by changing the folder to Sprint 2. Once I press Submit, you'll notice that those items are now in Sprint 2 and ready to be worked on. But at this point, I really don't have any test cases that I've written for these two requirements, so I need to, re I need to do that at this time. So to get started with that, I'll drill into the first one, and I'll begin this process. But before I do it, I always like to bring up a printer-friendly copy of this requirement. That way I have it 
and it makes it easy to refer to when I begin creating my test cases. So I'm going to press printer friendly and it'll prop, pop up a little printer friendly version of this requirement so that I can see it very easily here on the screen. Next I'm going to go into test case mode. To do that I'm going to press new test case and it's going to take me into test case mode. Now notice that it's automatically linking this back to that requirement. I don't have to do that separately at this point. Now I'll go ahead and start entering in the, the first test case. When reviewing this requirement I can see that we're going to be emailing the customer for a particular order. So I definitely want to have some positive test cases where I can email to a, a customer that has a valid email address and I probably want some negative test cases for those with an invalid email address. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I'll do is I'll put this in my library and since this is going to go into the order maintenance area I'm going to put it in my library of order maintenance test cases and the first test case that I'm going to write here is to send the email to a valid email address. I'll go ahead and enter some additional information. Alright so I've added some steps here to access the client order right click on the client's email leave the email as is because it's valid and press send now and then the expected result is that it should send this immediately. All I have to do at this point is press submit, add another and it adds this particular test case and it puts me back in add mode again. Now if I want to continue with this theme and create one for an invalid email address I could type all of that information in again. However I do have a nice little feature here called autofill from recent entry and I can choose the one that I just created and make the small changes that I need to. For example, I'm going to try it with an invalid email address at this point. I'm going to come here and I'm going to enter an invalid email and I'll say I'm going to enter in abc111.com with no at sign. Press send now and then the expect result is it should give us a warning. All right. I'll press submit and then that will now create that additional test case and link it back to this requirement. Now if I go back into the requirement I will see that those two test cases that I just created are now linked to this particular requirement. Now that we have our requirements defined and the test cases linked back to the requirement, at this point we want to go ahead and set up all of the test cases that we're going to run in this sprint too. To get started with that, we'll come to the test runs area, we'll expand release one, and we'll add another folder for sprint two by pressing add. Once add is pressed, we can then type in sprint two to create that folder. Once the folder is created, you'll notice that it's blank. There's no test cases in there. But what we really want to do is we want to go to our library and pull all of the test cases that we plan to run into that sprint. To do that, we simply click on the test library, press fast edit, press copy, choose all of the items. And by the way, we'll expand our items down here so that we can see sprint two. So we'll highlight all 29 of these test cases and we'll go ahead and just drag them into sprint two so that we can run them during the, th the sprint two process. Then we'll query for sprint two and then we'll begin our run process. To do that, you simply go into Ed to run mode and then you begin running it. We'll see all of the steps here and the expected results and if all is good, then we'll simply pass these and move on to the next one in the series. If this one passes, we'll do the same thing. We'll pass it and move on. If this particular test case fails, we can move this to a failed state and we can generate a defect automatically by simply clicking the bottom of the screen, automatically generate defect upon failed test case. Once you press submit, it'll then generate a defect for you. You can then edit that defect, you can set it up to be fixed in a particular release and you can assign it to a particular person. Notice that it fills in all of the steps to reproduce and expect the results for you and it ties this defect back to the test case as well as the requirement, giving you full traceability. At this point, it takes you right back into test mode so that you can continue with your testing. As you continue with your testing, you can use the dashboards to figure out how many tests have passed and how many have failed. So if I drill into Sprint 2, which is the release we're working on, I can very clearly see here that we have 22 test cases that are waiting run. We have some passed and some that have failed. Very similar to this, we can also analyze any defects that have come across our desk. 
Notice in our defects area, we're carrying all of our defects by sprint. Many times you'll want to search on defects a different way. Maybe you want to see all of your defects by status and by assignee. We can very easily do that by coming to the groups area. From here, we can say, I would like to see all of my defects by status. This will now re-query and show us that we have 67 defects open. If we want to subgroup that by assignee, it's very simple to do that. And then it will now re-query and show us all of the open items, but also show me who they're assigned to at this given time. Now you can group on anything you want here. It becomes very flexible for you. Very similar to the test cases area, the defects area also has a dashboard so that you can trend out all of your defects over time. You can find out how many are open and how many are resolved. You can also look at your defects by severity and by priority. If your team's using our test complete automated testing tool, you can also send the run results of those tests into QA complete. This also works with HP's Quick Test Pro. Here's an example of how to do it. You can come here and organize your automated test into full regressions or smoke tests. You can run a full regression and all of those results will be then posted into QA complete. If you want to run specific test cases like maybe an edit screen or something, you can come here and run an individual test and it will execute that test as well. The first thing it'll do is it'll open up the application that's under test. It'll run this test case to completion and immediately following that it will then write a log that will show you whether the test case passed and whether it failed. It even takes it a step forward. As it runs the test case, it makes screenshots of everything that's happening along the way so that you can very easily visually see what's happening on that particular time during that test run. When you're in Software Planner, you can then go to the automated runs area and you can see each run that's done day by day. You can even see what machine they were run on and you can see the run activity over on the test case dashboard. So far we've looked at how we can create requirements, how we can create a set of test cases and link those back to the requirement, and how we can generate defects when test cases are failed. We can also create defects manually by going in and entering them in manually. Now many times when you're working in a team environment, you want to ensure that any defects that are discovered are quickly fixed. And if any of them start to get stale, it would be really nice to be able to know that that's happening without having to go into QA Complete to figure that out. Well, this is very easy for us. You can go to the setup area and in, into the system configuration area, and we have a special area called escalation rules. For example, we can create a rule that will escalate any stale defects. To do that, you simply press add new rule and you get into add mode. In this example, I'm going to escalate any defect that has been active for two weeks. And I want to make sure that this defect has not been escalated more than three times. When it finds that event happening, it will send an email to the assignee and to the owner. It will also raise the priority of that defect or those defects to high priority, fix as soon as possible. So it's that easy to create these rules and allow it to automatically detect when things are getting stale. Hopefully by now you've seen how QA Complete can help your team manage your testing efforts. If you haven't downloaded your, your free 30-day trial yet, why not do it now? I'll send you out to the sign-up page now so that you can get started. Thank you.